Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm your digital Easter egg in this Digital Cities session because I'm not on the printed, uh, um, so, but I'm on the digital agenda today. So let me talk about thermal data. Um, we all know the temperature is at the center of climate change. It affects everything. It changes the water cycle. Uh, we heard about this right now. It changed the carbon cycle and has a huge impact on food security. It has a huge impact on agricultural productivity and environmental and health and an infrastructure risk. And today, I want to focus on the health and the infrastructure risk for cities. Um, so, the urban population in Germany, uh, in Europe, is 77%. So, in Germany, it's a bit less, but it's still a lot. In last year, we had 60,000 heat-related deaths in Europe, most of them in the cities, uh, because we have these so-called tropical nights from urban heat islands, where people with already had hard problems uh, um, have uh, go into problems. City centers are, on average, 5% hotter than the surrounding areas, and um, a lot needs to be done about this. So, we... We actually need a lot of temperature data to develop and calibrate microclimate mo modeling in cities. Um, we need really a digital twin for the climate of cities. We need to decide where to act first, where to build, where to bring mit mitigation measures like uh, greening, vegetation cover, um, water. And we need to validate these adaptation measures. That means we have to be able to measure um, the city centers, which we already measure with, with IOD devices, but also the surrounding areas. And if you look into, uh, at the thermal image of the city of Freiburg here, you can see the very city center is a red dot. Here, uh, I don't know if this works, um, to the right, and you can see a lot of blue areas uh, where we have uh, vegetation cover, like trees, um, and these blue areas, of, of course, are much, much cooler in the land surface temperature. So what we do at Constellar, we actually are launching our own satellite constellation starting next year to measure temperature in a 30 by 30 meter grid on Earth. Um, it is, um, we are being supported by ESA. We are part of the Copernicus program. We are supported by the German national government and the European Commission to bring these satellites up into the sky. And our mission is really to measure temperature and water and carbon all over the Earth, um, and especially the urban heat problem has come to our attention. What we actually measure then is, oh, there's the image is missing. That's a pity. So we measure the land surface temperature, as you can see in, I'm going back. So, In this image, so we measure land surface temperature, but we also measure the evapotranspiration rate, which um, you can see on the right side on this slide. So the evapotranspiration rate allows us to measure, for example, the health of urban vegeta vegetation, also the cooling amount you can get um, in, in the areas of the city. So this really blue image shows uh, the center of Stuttgart in this summer when it was really hot. And the image actually shows that they did have a lot of water in the ground, and so the cooling effect of the urban greens really worked well in this case. Ah, okay, there's the image. Um, let me continue. With this image, so um, what we actually are is a, is an, uh, is a, is a 30 by 30 meter grid input for microclimate modeling um, for, for different cities. So in this case, you can, you can see the thermal infrared image of Melbourne on the left side and the visual image of uh, Melbourne on the right side. On the left side, you can see in the city center where the really the urban heat island effect is most prominent. And um, this, uh, if you can measure this daily and nightly, especially during the night, you can see where it cools down during the night and where it doesn't cool do, uh, down during the night. And in this case, you, could, um, you can pinpoint where you need to act first, where you need to act fast, because it gets hotter and hotter every year. 
and also you can validate your measures and validate the public spending um, the cities have to do to create cooler surroundings in the, in the cities. Um, next, um, this is an image of an, uh, really it's not an, an urban forest, but it's a near urban forest because this is next to Düsseldorf actually. And you can see here the cooling effect of the, of the forest, but you can also see and measure the health of the urban vegetation. And this is also quite important because if you can see how, how much water your urban greens need, and we have learned in the previous presentation that water gets more and more expensive, um, you, can, you can streamline your water usage and save water to um, really pinpoint those places where you need to irrigate your urban greens first. And also the health of the urban vegetation, it becomes a big problem because when it gets hotter and hotter, um, with thermal data, you are able to see very early an onset of water stress and um, infectious diseases to your trees inside the city. So what we really want to know is to find out the green areas that have a cooling effect. We want to find out the cool spots. We want to, uh, want to find out the hot spots. And also, for example, road conditions where the road gets too hot. And um, we use that for a calibration for the, for the local weather measurements. You can um, integrate the thermal data from our satellites. And I do have some products back here, but I think they are too small to read for you. So I invite you to come along to our booth at uh, B27, that's in Hall 27, and discuss with us. So I think I'm already done. If you have any questions, please go ahead.